All right, welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I'm here to talk about the first fight of the evening, Teresa Bleda making her UFC debut against Natalia Silva. Bleda is 6-0 and overall. She's got two victories via TKO, two victories via submission, two victories via decision. All six of those victories come on the ground. She That's where she does her best work. She's a monster from top. She's also 5-0 and as, as an amateur, and she's got three victories as exhibitions against decent competition uh, just two years ago. And these are exhibitions against pros. Uh, Lucia Pudelova being one of them. Who, Lucia, we saw return to the UFC for the second time, I think, uh, this year. And she's, you know, obviously a bona fide UFC fighter in her prime or whatever, you know, damn close to it. And Teresa Bleda fought her and beat her at 19 years old. Those were nine minute fights, three, three minute rounds, which shorter rounds and shorter fights altogether definitely favor the more inexperienced fighter. And, Regardless, it was, uh, she outpointed Lucia Pudelova by defending guillotines and ripping her to the mat, uh, I don't know, like 150 times in nine minutes. So she is a really good wrestler, Teresa Bleda, and that's evident in all of her fights. You know, as I said, her wins come from top control, but, uh, yeah, her, her wrestling is there for her. She's got a ridiculously good shot. She's good inside the clinch as well, but what separates her, I think, is her having a good shot, especially for someone who's so tall at five foot nine. She's really uh, geared her fighting game towards those takedowns, and she's you know she's definitely competent on the feet. I don't think she's gonna fight well for fifteen minutes at a kickboxing match with uh, Natalia Silva, but I think she's gonna comport herself well on the feet with tight, you know, defensively sound striking as a means to an end, getting her way inside, and she's good at that, she seems to be effective, and I really like her offensive wrestling, she's also got great submissions, and she's good from the guard as well, sometimes she gets a little uh, too overzealous on top with her passing game, and that's cost her position, but once she's rolled to her back, she's been really deadly, snatching up arm bars, and cutting angles for triangles, and all different things, uh, you know, she's, her nickname is Rhonda, and she does have a little bit of Rhonda in her, you know, both these girls do, really, Natalia Silva might have more Rhonda in her, honestly, with her armbar proficiency, but, uh, Teresa Bleda definitely has good guard work and good overall submission game, but, uh, her top game is really what's gonna find her success in MMA, because, not only does it give her the submissions, but it gives her the ground and pound, which, if this girl gets the full mount, she is like Luke Rockhold. When Luke Rockhold gets the full mount, the fight's over. Or unless Herb Dean's the ref or whoever ref that Weidman fight. But uh, generally speaking, the full mount, is, you know, it's, it's so deadly for Luke. And that's how it is with Blada. She's heavy on top. She, you know, again, she can get overzealous and cost herself position. But otherwise, when she's, you know, I think if she fights to just secure the mount and uh, hold it there, She's going to be really tough to buck, and she's a big problem on top, just with her, her overall physicality and her size. She's such a big woman here for flyweight. She's a five foot nine flyweight. She's got seven inches of reach and five inches of height on Natalia Silva. So this girl, there's a lot of hype with her for a reason. She's definitely got a uh, future ahead of her, and she's already proven herself in MMA. Not too many great victories, and her contender series fight was a good victory over um, Nayara Maya, who's a good grappler, and she was outgrappled. That's the story of that fight, although I could see where there's some cause for concern with Blada being outstruck uh, and being outstruck by Natalia Silva in this fight, but I think uh, still... Her chances of winning aren't on the feet. You know, I don't think she's going to win a fight on the feet with Natalia Silva. Not the way Natalia Silva's looked as of late, especially in her debut, which this brings me to Natalia Silva. 13 and 5, three finishes via TKO, seven submissions, six of which are arm bars, I believe. And her five losses are to really good competition. Earlier on, she lost, uh, the, you know, once to the same, she lost twice to the same girl who retired, but. If you take one look at her resume, you could see this girl was underrated. She had a tough road in just whatever, five, six fights, whatever she had. But uh, 
The last loss, and the only loss in the last seven, eight years, is to Marina Rodriguez. And that was a decision loss. So, Natalia Silva, her durability is, uh, it's there for her. And, you know, her submission defense, I'm sure it's tightened up as she's racked up plenty of submission victories. The thing is, her only real sound submission victory is her, the one to, uh, Joyce Myra, Mara, over in, uh, whatever. Uh, Jungle Fight. It was a jungle fight, I don't fucking know. But either way, that was a fourth round submission. It was very nice. She, you know, got it from top control. Um, like Mighty Mouse Johnson on Horaguchi, just climbing her way up and just got a pretty quick arm bar there once they were on the ground. It, it was uh, very impressive. And she's got some plenty of other submissions, but they're all over lesser competition that's not as proven. And I think, uh, you know, still, that's... First and foremost, her strength, but in this fight, she's going to want to fight, uh, I think, to exploit any weakness in Teresa's game. She's not going to be looking to do it on the ground. Of course, she could once they hit the ground. I think she's got a good chance of exploiting weaknesses, you know, finding an armbar herself, but uh, on the feet is where she's going to want to expose Teresa Blada. Teresa Blada is, again, she's big, tall, strong. She's got every striking advantage you could want possible, uh, naturally, but... She's not uh, as sound of a striker as Natalia Silva. And the way Natalia handled Jasmine Jazz Davidius, who is, if I had to give you a template for Teresa Bleda out of any current UFC fighter on the roster for Natalia Silva to fight, it would have been Jasmine Jazz Davidius. You know, and uh, Jasmine was not able to out wrestle Natalia, didn't even come close. That was uh, just a picture perfect performance from Natalia Silva, and it really bodes well for her chances against a style like uh, Teresa Bleda's, or what I think is going to be her style. But still, I'm going with the underdog here because I think Teresa Bleda, I, you know, again, the ceiling is there. She could be that good, but I think she is that good. I think, uh, you know, even if her striking is not going to be there for her, just her size and her wrestling will be there, and. When she gets on top of Natalia Silva, I do think she can win the round, if not finish the fight. So, I'm taking uh, uh, Teresa Bleda to get at least two takedowns. I like her money line at plus 135 for a sprinkle. I don't love it because, uh, you know, again, this fight could go either way. And having seen Natalia Silva handle Jazz Davidius, I think she's in her prime right now. And her style is definitely, you know, tailored to uh, beating what I think will be Teresa Blada's weaknesses, or finding uh, what I think will be Teresa Blada's weaknesses. But I'm going with Blada. Just, you know, if she's as good as I think she can be, she's going to be able to get Natalia Silva down and remind her what it's like to be on the bottom there and uh, suck some life out of her, I think, with suffocating top control, if not getting a finish. The only prop bets I really like for this are the TKO prop bets, which are long shots. I don't... You know, my pick isn't TKO, but I do think, especially for Teresa, the, uh, well, really for either fighter. If Natalia Silva handles a 20-year-old fighter her first loss, and it's a beating over the course of 15 minutes, there's a good chance she gets a finish. Even though Natalia's more likely to get a submission finish, I think she's going to be looking to exploit uh, Teresa Blade's stand-up weaknesses. So the TKO victory uh, prop bets could be worth a shot for Natalia as well. Plus 2,000, plus 2,500, plus 3,000. If BetUS was normal and they just had a flat KO prop, it would be uh, plus 700 or so for um, plus 700 for Natalia Silva to win by KO. For Teresa Blada and by KO for Blada, I do mean TKO from the full mount, it would be plus 10,000. I'm sorry, yeah, plus 1,000, plus 1,100, or, you know, plus 950 or something for her to win by TKO flat. Those are underrated. If you can find those bets, I would sprinkle something on them because, uh, uh, again, these girls, one of them's inexperienced, 20 years old, and when you suffer your first loss, it could be just, you know, but, uh, I think a finish is more likely, especially for a 20 year old. I know that's not. Something people look to. They look more to experience than age. But I do think when you're 20 years old, uh, you're more susceptible to being broken than you are as a more comfortable 30-year-old fighter, even someone in your mid-20s with 18 fights like Natalia Silva. But uh, on the flip side of that, Teresa Blada is so strong with her full mount. And even though she gets overzealous and whatever, I think she's... Uh, 
very capable of being that Luke Rockhold. And Luke Rockhold, if I ever saw him with odds like this for his TKO odds, I would take them in a heartbeat. Of course, he's got better striking as well, which cover those odds. But his full mount, uh, you know, that's what I see from Teresa Bleda. Very strong full mount, and it's going to be the source of the majority of her victories. Could be more submissions and TKOs, but so far it's 2-2 in her career. All right, so that's my prediction bets. A lot of gibberish, 10 minutes on the first fight of the evening. Hope you guys uh, enjoy this. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit, and check out my other videos.